in a world where everyone is looking for your money up front, doesn't it just make sense to check out a podcast that's looking to give you something for free? Like the music for your content and free music for your film and videos? Look no further. It's the Tim Kulig Free Music Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the Tim Kulig Free Music Podcast. I'm your host, Tim Kulig. This week happens to be in between the two holidays in 2023, so I thought it'd be neat to introduce you all to another podcast I'm involved with called Same Same But Different, involving very famous internet composer Kevin McLeod and also Alex Nakarada of Norway, another composer and friend of mine. We are starting this journey of the three of us talking about composing and various things in the world and in tech and AI and everything you can imagine, everything in between. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Alex and Kevin and myself on Same Same But Different. So I, I figured, or Kevin figured that we should just probably uh, after uh, finishing the recording, we just separate the audio and the video and then we throw it into the Adobe speech enhancement. And yeah, yeah. everyone has perfect podcasting voice or right. gear. So that's wheat. Also, I've been thinking about the name, same, same, but different. I kind of like that name for the podcast. Okay. Considering we had the kind of uh, theme where we all have the same job, but in very, very different ways. <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's let's chew on that. Okay. I also got a cold, so we hopefully I'm able to turn away before coughing and sneezing into your ears. <laughs> I believe the AI will fix that. But that's going to look stupid on video, though, if, if I'm sneezing. <laughs> you'll be, you'll just be like, voice. there'll be nothing. You're just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, is he? <laughs> Does Alex have Tourette's? Like, what's going on over there? Absolutely. Uh, do it. Is there an outline? Is there show notes? Is there what's going on? How do we do this? Is there Tim? Intro? Tim? <laughs> oh, I, I was going to say, I, I'll probably tack on. Well, for the audio portion, I'll probably tack on like an intro and outro, but um, I said we just this is supposed to be kind of a open forum discussion, uh, right, Alex? So basically, just like every call we have, yeah, oh, yeah, where we say, yeah, make it as natural as possible. We right? should have recorded this. Oh, great, this was such a great talk. We should have recorded it, but now we do, yeah, so. all right, sounds good, yeah, gosh, not watching what I say, me. <laughs> it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. I'm gonna try it. We'll see. What are they gonna do? Cancel me? <laughs> that would actually be truly awful to get canceled. Yeah. Like if I turned out to be some sort of like horrible killer thing, and then like everybody's got my music in their stuff, and they'd be like, "Oh my no. god!" <laughs> <laughs> impossible to unravel. Yeah. You know, impossible. That's yeah. going to be a bigger problem than any movie producer, any director, a a everyone would like this. This would affect so many people. Yeah. 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 But, I love the fact that you're kind of displaying the apartment, the open yeah. area for two reasons. Number one, okay. the lights and the, and the foliage are glorious, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> for two I was a part of setting that up, so I'm so super excited to see it in the video. <laughs> it is, and also, I don't have to sit down, because I get real cranky when I sit down for interviews. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, I have a, a lower race desk. I have used it once. I should probably, I mean... <laughs> but it is at the exact correct height. You know what? Kevin yeah. does it, has the same thing over there. Kevin has yeah. the same thing over there. And once we got that set up in the new place, he was like, help, it wants this thing won't move. It won't raise or lower. I'm like, I think we're missing a cord. Yeah, I, th I think that's the biggest problem with these desks, that, those cables. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm not sure if I, if I raise this desk now, will I like stretch a USB cable and break it? I might. <laughs> it is possible. So yeah, just a small introduction from... 
each of the three faces. Yeah. Kevin, you can start. Yeah. Hey, I'm Kevin McLeod. I'm a composer. I write mostly royalty-free music stuff for the internets, and I'm in Florida. Nice. Nice. It's the weather's nice beautiful, as always. <laughs> nobody, can, nobody wants to hear that the weather here is awesome. I've learned this. Yeah, you're. Uh, it's like, oh, it's right. snowing up there. You know, it's actually beautiful. It's 22 degrees and sunny. But I, I think, <laughs> like, oh, well, I think it's <laughs> important that you say it so that we have a uh, like a uh, go a thing going for when I talk about my weather. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, you should not live there. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> I'll I'll go then. I'll go then. Okay. Uh, Alexander Nakarada. Uh, I mostly do royalty-free music uh, as a composer for the internet, just like Kevin and Tim and everyone here, which is why that we're here, I guess. <laughs> I live in Norway. My uh, native language is not English, so bear with me. And uh, yeah, the weather is shit. <laughs> how many degrees celsius are we today <laughs> today we're only at like minus five six oh so i mean t-shirt weather basically it sounds awful <laughs> I, I i don't know i haven't been outside that equates to like 20 or something in fahrenheit yeah right? it is below freezing but okay. this is how you know because that's what all we care about is it all i know is is it gonna rain the only time those two numbers coincide with each other is, is minus 40, right? Yeah. Right. That's the only time you could say it's minus 40 Celsius. Yeah. It's also minus 40 Fahrenheit, too. But if and I, if if I say minus, then you automatically know it's below freezing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, your skill is far superior to uh, uh, except when it comes to body temperature. That's what I figured out. Because you have a uh, like uh uh, internal body body temperature of a hundred, right? That's normal. Ninety? Uh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Ninety eight point six. <laughs> it was supposed to be a hundred back when Sharon and I developed the system, hmm. and then they codified it, and something was wrong. So yeah, ninety eight point six is yeah. It's, it's okay. not even round. I take back everything. It's uh, yeah. shit one, in everyone. What, what's body temperature in thirty Celsius. thirty seven and a half? Okay. You, yep. So <laughs> yeah. Nobody has it, I guess. Nobody's, well, nobody's got one. Well, that's the weird thing about Fahrenheit, though. Like, it, the scale can be anywhere from, like, 97 to 100. And that could, like, your yeah. base could be in there somewhere. Because my base is, like, 97.6, something like that, 97.4. That's, like, my normal low temperature. So if I'm 99, like, I'm under the weather, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, which is only 0.4 above standard yeah but i know like physically i can feel it i'm like mm, something is off I, i'm i'm my body's pushing something because my normal temperature i haven't i have a standard temperature below the normal you know when do you like officially have a fever um they say that a degree in either direction yeah. is normal so anything like over 99.6 yeah 100 yeah, yeah exactly 100 uh, that's a good rule of thumb if it's over 100 it's like okay so yeah, that's how something. Fahrenheit makes sense. Yeah, you have hundred. Yes. Six. Okay, a hundred is sick. <laughs> well, I'll chime in. I'm Tim Kulig. I'm also a composer. I also do it royalty free. I hail also from Florida, and I'm not gonna give you a hard time about the wonderful temperature down here <laughs> compared to. <laughs> Compared to Norway, because we all know you're much closer to the Arctic Circle than we are, and uh, and yeah, I we're here to really talk. Do anything about that? No, <laughs> no. There's not a lot. There's not. A, there's not a lot you can. You know, I could probably move to the U.S., but it seems so shitty. <laughs> well, certain places are. Certain places are. Yeah. Um, it's highly variable. Yeah. Yeah. For two years in a row, I guess Tampa's like the number one place to be. So, according to something, it seems some. Like yeah, I mean, you if you set your local news to wherever, like Kansas City, number one place to be, says the Kansas City Star Review, really Journal. Yeah, Green Bay is like, oh well, yeah, we made the list of best something. I just read an article this morning that was saying like the number one place to 
retire. And it was someplace in Ohio. I'm like, <laughs> are you out of your mind? What? <laughs> well, hi first of all, it's a state that has a state income tax, which screw that. Um, secondly, it's, it's Ohio. <laughs> it it's, is, it is Ohio. It, no, no, there's no palm trees. It, there's no sun. There's no open body of water from the ocean. I mean, that, these are all my must haves. <laughs> What's so your latest a movie yesterday? And uh, I watched through it to see if I wanted to score it. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, Jim, if, if you're interested, it, it's kind of a horror suspense thing. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Is there a is there an open link to like a Ven or a, a, a uh, not Venmo? Um, yeah, I can, I can like a, download YouTube or whatever. Um, yeah, it sounded it's on a Google file exchange or whatever. I found myself falling to sleep last night from the narrative that you left on Discord, thinking it was oh. either either a David Cronenberg film or a David Lynch <laughs> film. Like like the way that you were describing it. I'm like Lynch. what is happening here? You know? Yeah, it is it is hard to figure out. But uh Yeah, I just don't like doing horror stuff. I don't like doing suspense stuff. It makes me feel icky after yeah. too long, so and I know, like you seem fine with it. I might have, I might have enough of a catalog to incorporate into some of those scenes. I don't know. I'll take a look yeah, at it. Just drop a minute. Didn't you post something about you being a horror expert? Something on Facebook earlier today? Um, no, I didn't. I don't think I said anything about being an expert in that. But uh, you have like an expert um, title on. Oh, oh you must be. Oh, you're looking at um. Uh, horror game expert or something on uh, in search for scary. It's like a uh, it's a group my buddy Bob Cobus runs on uh, Facebook, and they have like he's been doing this thing for like a couple years now. And him and uh, another friend of mine, Darren DeFranzo, they they started this group on there of just like stuff from like old scary movies or like scary pictures or like AI scary stuff. And they have like thirty two or thirty five thousand. Like, oh, like really? members on the page. I'm like, dude, how did you get all these numbers? He's like, I, I, dude, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I just, I'm consistent about posting and boom. Yeah. And I'm like, well, th he's like the poster child of that. Nice. Be consistent, you know? Yeah. No, but, um, he has me as a group expert in there. Cause I, I would post a bunch of stuff or contribute a lot. And, uh, it, it gave some options and I was like, oh, I like horror video games. I'll put that in there. And I'm like, my experts kind of hyperbole. I don't, I, I'm a, I'm probably a, you know, mid level understanding of certain things, you know. But <laughs> nonetheless, no, I did a, I did that. Um, I posted last night because I, I published another two album that's coming out, uh, Christmas Day, and now I've officially hit 502 tunes. So congratulations! Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. Very psyched about that. Now, now I'm going to take a break. <laughs> well, at least through the holidays. I, I just figured out that Bandcamp, you know, we can like upload uh, albums to Bandcamp oh. and their limit is 549. So songs, because <laughs> you're, you're right there. You're right. Aren't you like 550, 550? I don't, I don't use it anymore. I, I can't. It's full. I'm not going to make a complete discography volume two that's just stupid <laughs> that's I, insane they have a finite number right, right. yeah wow and it takes about uh, people about i would say 20 minutes to actually download the thing uh or to get the download button because the the <laughs> page is not handling these big collections <laughs> 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 you broke something I, it was designed to be used differently apparently band camp yeah yeah, yeah. The band camp. Yeah. Most <laughs> most people don't write this much music. <laughs> no, that's so. yeah. I I've emailed them like, do you have any uh, other solution for me to use? But no, they don't. Yeah. I mean, they. Don't. I, I joked around with Kevin a few weeks ago about this. Um, it may have been longer, but I was bringing up. Um, are you familiar with the '90s band Winger? No, Alex. Interestingly enough, um, big hair band like '80s style rock hair band type of thing they had a couple breakout hits or whatever and um uh interesting enough the lead singer is now an orchestral 
composer. Like they, he's gone away from the whole rock <laughs> genre, and he does that whole thing. I saw some like like uh, documentary. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But what the 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 uh, the breakout comment and conversation I have with Kevin about him was they had like four albums between like the late 80s and early 90s, right? Then they had a best of. <laughs> it's like, it yeah. was like four releases and then best of. And it's like, and then like all like live albums. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, when I first started publishing stuff, I think I released four albums in like three months. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, then, and, and I'm just like, it's different, different path, I guess, you know, and it, you're like, you're refining things, yeah. you know, I, well, I, being in a band though, like four or five people working together to make something, mm. of course it takes longer. Mm. <laughs> For sure. It's a different audience, right? Yeah. And different creative venue. Yeah. Well, a good example, like, there's like Genesis, right? Like, when Phil Collins went on a solo album, he did No Jacket Required. I mean, that was a huge album. Yeah. You know? Um, clearly, he could carry, you know, hold his own on, on his own, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, then, then you start to figure out who was actually carrying the band as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, man. I was listening to an interview with Roger Waters back, I guess, gotta be in the 90s or whatever, and uh, the interviewer, uh, he was... Uh, I think it was a bass player for Pink Floyd. Hmm. And they like, and then he put out a solo album called Radio Chaos. He's like, you know, the interviewer is like, you know, do you, uh, do you think like the success of your Radio Chaos is mostly due to Pink Floyd fans? And he's going, success? What success? It didn't sell. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, Roger Waters. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people peg it, peg that phrase to monetary gain but that's not necessarily the be all end all definition of success right um i think successfully getting your music in the ears the ear holes and <laughs> yeah the minds of as many people as possible is yeah. pretty successful you know yeah um, that's that's really that's that's literally everybody's job right right yeah like entertain as many people as possible while being as le least annoying as possible. So Kanye is, you know, <laughs> uh, it's pretty high on both scales. Like, it, it, would you say that uh, if Monkey Spinning Monkeys did not make any money, would you call it a successful song? Oh, I mean, if it yeah, was one used... of the most successful songs of all time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it was used all the yeah. same places, but made no money, um, it yeah. would definitely be a success. Yeah, anytime I bring it up on my phone to be like, oh, yeah, you know Kevin McLeod, right? And you're like, I think I've heard that name. I'm like, have you heard this? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, like at least a thousand times, yeah. you know? Right. And I'm like, yes, of course you have. Yeah, of course you have. It's like every time I have to explain Kevin to a friend or someone, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard this song? Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that's literally how I explain myself to people in real life, too. Yeah. yeah. It should be on like, like, oh, what, yeah. kind of, what kind of stuff do you do? Just hang it out of the bar. I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We did that at that Irish pub two weeks ago. There was right. some guy we were talking to, and uh, I'm like, hold on. Here, listen to this. Do you hear that? And he's like, oh, yeah, I know that song. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that song. About 20 others. If you know that, you probably know like 20 others. Yeah. I mean, there's a handful. Uh, yeah, but that guy actually knew about Creative Commons zero licensing. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. yeah he, he had person first... who was like hooked into the industry in some way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when I heard that, my ears perked up. I'm like, oh. <laughs> we're going to have, inf have an informed conversation at the moment, you know? That's cool. Yeah, even people who use Creative Commons don't know what it is. That's the increase barely <laughs> what it is. Right? <laughs> I believe Creative Commons Zero has still never been, like, challenged or, like, upheld in any U.S. courts. So, that's, that's probably because there's not a lot of good in... 
I mean, that's how, that's how good they are at writing licenses, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to arrest. Yeah, we're not even going to bother zero. taking this to Kari. <laughs> yeah, well, it still doesn't solve my 200 copyright claims every week. <laughs> God. Oh, it's not 200. Let's say twice a week. It's pro- I was probably 200 and about one out of 100 people will email you. Because everyone else is just, you know, afraid and think that they've done something wrong. And it's, ah, it's really hard to get people to just, it's like, be brave, take a chance. <laughs> we'll worry about the legalities of it later. Like, I don't want my site blocked or whatever. I yeah, think people channeled out that immediately, yes. Yeah. Can we solve that now in this podcast forever? Let's, let's hope that most people who... <laughs> who receive <laughs> these claims, watch this and realize that yes. it's fine. Yes, just challenge it. 100% this just is. challenge it. It's a lie. It's false. Now, if you're actually cribbing like somebody else's video and like freebooting that, no, now stop it. You need to stop doing whatever you're doing. But if you're using our music legally, that's fine. I'm not saying that copyright strikes don't exist for a reason because they do. <laughs> They have a purpose. Right. They d- they do and they do a good job. Yeah. I mean, if we got rid of copyright, we wouldn't have copyright strikes. So that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I mean that I think that would be bad for more people than it's good for yeah. some. Mm. I mean, we would have a blast. Our lives would be a million times easier. <laughs> <laughs> that would be easier. Shouldn't we just have like national, international, and then internet? <laughs> Great. You do you all you have to do is get everyone to agree. Yeah. Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you working on, Mr. Alexander? Uh games. Games. Playing or scoring oh, or scoring. programming? Yeah. Scoring them. Oh, scoring. Oh, very cool. What type? Like, what type of game? There is a lot of... I. Uh, well, they call it, like... Uh, it's a genre that's called, like, something-something visual novels. Ah. Oh, okay. Visual novels. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Like, like story games, story-based games. Okay. Somehow, Me- my music has gotten really popular in that genre. I, I have no idea why. I think it's because of a game called Love and Magic... Uh, which is a game made by one of my patrons and it's been really successful and I think a lot of people are trying to do that same thing. Yeah, that that okay. was I think that was featured on Steam, right? Yeah. Yeah, very cool. I have not played it. I have not played it either. <laughs> <laughs> like you watch any movies with your film with your music in it? Not if I can try not if I can help it. I've already seen that film fifty times. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't like right. see one more. <laughs> I mean, I I probably wouldn't even know that it was my music uh, like, <laughs> until after about five minutes. Like, oh, I, and sometimes I come across stuff and I hear the music and I'm like, hmm, I've heard this before. It was this. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, it's mine. <laughs> Song number yeah. 256. It's been about right. three years since I heard that the last time. What's well, funny how it goes back there and you kind of forget about it and then you like rediscover it yeah. down the road. I'm like, oh, oh, that's getting traction now. I'm like, well, that was a pretty decent tune. Yeah. Not my favorite. And it never is, right? It's it never is. your favorite. No. Never your favorite. It's always like, uh, I could have done this. I could have done something with those notes. I could, yeah, yeah all this, yeah. like the mix is a little, eh. like, you know, basic stuff that are just built into my workflow now. It's just not a thing back then. Yeah. But I also come across pieces where it's like, oh, how the fuck did I make this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, I'm not this good. <laughs> like, am I getting worse? <laughs> but usually the opposite, you know? There was a neat a neat story about uh, Franz Liszt, I believe, who was like a pretty famous piano player. 
and he wrote a bunch of music for piano and was just like famous for being able to just read down anything. And they put a piece of music in front of me. It's like, oh, it's pretty good. What is it? It's like, uh, yeah, you wrote that. <laughs> like, oh, nice. <laughs> It's a thing. If you make a lot, then well, I mean, you're not going to remember all of it. It's not new. Yeah, it's not, not, not a new uh, phenomenon. <laughs> That's so amazing. weird, though. Like, y- you know you've heard it before, but it takes you a few yeah. seconds to realize that you actually made it. It's probably the same with visual artists. Like, those who make three paintings every day. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know that. Good composition yeah. here. I like the color you use. Ah, that is me. <laughs> right well you know what you like you know <laughs> and it's also been weird to me that like, mu- composers and musicians who don't listen to their own music i think that's so weird what do you mean don't listen to, i mean i do listen to my own music i just don't try to uh yeah it's not like when you're driving you put on a playlist with exclusive you exclusively your own songs <laughs> almost never you yeah, don't real the time <laughs> You do that? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I do the same thing. I do the same hmm. thing. And I don't do it because, like, I want to, uh, like, analyze the techniques, or I I listen to it because I enjoy it. Is that oh, weird? <laughs> no, it's not because no. I I do the same thing, but I do half and half. Half of it's analyzing to see like what I've learned, what I could have done better. Yeah, and the other half is because. Well, the reason I made it was because I liked it. Right. The same thing. Yeah. And and um, I'll go back to an album that had... It's rare that I have an album that all the tracks resonate with me, right? Some of them are quote-unquote filler songs. They're yeah. songs I know I had to finish, yeah. and invariably it's going to end up being something that somebody likes, and I can't decide what people like, so I'm like, okay, fine, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to publish it and see what happens, right? But every once in a while, there was like this orchestral album I did called Symphony of Swords as this big dragon on the front of it and stuff. Pretty much every song on that album resonates with me because every one of them I really enjoyed making and I loved the way it came out. Yeah. But but there's other albums that I'm just like, why didn't I like this one so much? You know, and I'll listen to it. I'll be listening to it in the car and I'll, I'll try to, I'll skip it. I want to skip it in the car and then I'll have to force. I'm like, don't, don't <laughs> listen to it. Find out why you don't like it as much. You know, like, yeah. what is it about it? I was going to say, speaking of album covers, uh, how has your album cover design changed in the last year, guys? Oh, <laughs> significantly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. He asks knowingly. It's, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's about 100% less Pixabay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just like that's, some, uh, that's a good art that I did like back in the nineties and early two thousands, and I look at the new ones, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> everything's just so getting better. Good. They're so good. I tell Alex, I, I I feel like I have a behind the scenes sneak peek whenever he's releasing something because <laughs> I'll see him in a Discord thread screwing around with Mid Journey. I'm like, ah, yeah, Alex <laughs> gonna have a release today. Can I'm like, I can't wait. Imagine what the song is gonna sound like as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, cyberpunk. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Let's see what's coming up. I mean, it's so All right, Alexander. We got we got we got to talk go about concern there. Mm-hmm. Uh, proper you, painting or image. You, yeah, you made this for one of your album things. <laughs> I think it didn't make the cut. But what was the prompt? What are you looking for here? Uh, I think it was you know. some sort of um, like uh, South American street music kind of thing. Oh, okay. I can't yeah. remember the prompt, but I think it was like some South American street musicians or whatever. I, look, I love Maybe the fact. Band. I I really have to emphasize this at the moment because it's so significant. I love the fact <laughs> that Kevin, who is almost completely digital. Yes. Took the time to physically print out some of these images. <laughs> yeah. He ordered you them and they were so delivered amazing. to. Yeah, I mean, just should have been about w- coal when we 
discovered the gazerpal horns. Oh, that was so <laughs> the AI is really bad at figuring out how to make brass instruments. Like yes. this guy's blowing into a thing which is melding with this thing. There's a thing back here <laughs> that doesn't even connect up here. What is this doing? I this is another one. That I've but it looks very festive. It's, it's very, very festive. festive. Now, these are the coolest people on the planet. They're here with their uh, royal base gazorpal <laughs> horns. I don't know. This guy is playing uh, some sort of shampoo bottle, I assume. Oh, it's like very hard to tell. <laughs> it is incredible. I mean, look at... And apparently in the middle of the street. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sing there. Oh, that's <laughs> great. We can figure out what these things would sound like. It's going to be somewhere between a French horn and a tuba. <laughs> can we drop... <laughs> Can we drop that image into Pika and then yeah. animate it? Yeah, animate it. Yeah. Sure. Let's do that. These oh, that sounds be, like a fun so project. This, this, may be, this may have real music for it. So, oh my God. Probably not. Can't <laughs> say. <laughs> you know, I don't think anyone can play this in but it's like at all. But. It's so weird, though, because the, the picture is so perfect. Yeah. But the brass instrument is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> everything else, colors, scenery, everything is perfect. Well, it's it's night and day from where we were at last like July. Yeah. Right. Like like July in 2022. <laughs> Mid Journey, um Dolly 2, you know, that like they yeah. were all bumping it like like Do you'd have Dolly a hand and it's mini. like 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 <laughs> here's a hand and it's like yeah. hello. This looks normal, doesn't it? No. No, that's at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I almost hope that it will never figure out how to do the brass instruments because they're just so... I don't know. I, so entertaining. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I basically printed out all the ones that you couldn't use for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, people are like, oh, we don't we'll need designers anymore. It's like, well, designers can do a lot better job than I can with these tools, so... Mm. They're still going to be better. I'm just going to not suck. Yeah. And it's like uh, my tattoo artist, which is probably one of the best illustrators I know. He's extremely talented. But half of my tattoos now are made by Midjourney. Really? Yeah. But they're just making his workflow easier. Like, instead of him spending oh, nice drawing a perfect Odin, I could just prompt Odin and get it in 20 seconds. Yeah. Be like, hey, dude, I want to do this. Yeah. Can you do something like this? Yeah. Perfect. You know? And it's going to be... I live above a tattoo place. I wonder if they use AI to design stuff now. They should. We should ask them. No. Yeah. I mean, as a client, what better way to walk in and be like, listen, this is what I want. Yeah. Like, right. emulate this. I mean, they still have to produce that piece of art, you know? It's still... Yeah. yeah. They still have to functionally get it on your arm and not look like some five-year-old drew it, you know? (laughs) Is there going to be a lot of editing for this? It seems like... No. I don't think... No. Oh, no. (laughs) No, we're just free-forming it, man. Yeah, raw conversation. I mean, this is how interesting a composer's life is. Not really. It's about that interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully we get some feedback on what what kind of people listening and if they're actually like trying to get something out of their own music or because we have somehow like figured it out. So we are a source of information for a lot of people. Yeah. I think great. I think we should start the podcast right there. (laughs) (laughs) We can ditch everything up to this point. We don't even have one edit point. Yeah, but the the problem is that. So what do we know that other people don't? Um, yeah, I mean, I sort of tried hanging out in the composer forum of Reddit, and just yeah. people's ideas of what things are just aren't the reality. But I don't know how to explain it to them. You know, it's like you know, I just wrote my first opera, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, my friend. <laughs> Have you seen the real? I don't know. Something smaller first, you know? 
I mean, I still uh, remember all the tips you gave me back in the day, Kevin. So, I mean, I can just pass those on to other yeah. people that are starting out now. I, w- I would be horrified to hear what I told you. Okay, there are two, <laughs> two things that stuck with me. Uh, the first one was that forget monetization, forget everything, give it away. That's how it spreads. Mm-hmm. People love free. Agreed. Stuff. Yes. That's the first one. And the other one is Oops. that you are not to judge what is good and what's not. <laughs> <laughs> two things. You can't two you monsters. can't tell. And they both worked out, right? Yeah. It's um, they release things where you're like, eh. And and people are like, this is the best. I'd have to say I agree with both of those for me personally with Kevin. Um, in addition to that, I would say one other. And Kevin literally just said the simplest thing in the world. He's like, dude, just do the thing. Do the thing. Don't get like caught up in the minutia of like whatever. It, like just get it out there. Yeah. Get them out. A better digital to audio converter for my speaker setup. How are my head? No. Fuck no, them all. Fuck your tech. Everything. Just yeah. Fuck your tech. Matter. Especially yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah. if, even in the beginning, before I even started mastering my songs, like people just did that. People just took the MP3 and enhanced it, and then yeah. like used that instead. Like most people know what they're doing. <laughs> I hope, yeah, yeah, most people. And the more, and the more people. people do it, and the longer they do it, the more they know. And yeah. there's always going to be beginners in every field, and that's fine. Yeah. Well, some of the log- some of the things in logic that you could do for passes as well as like some of the uh um the post production editing suites like um I think Ozone is one of them like they do like mastering you can put that in there and you can like finish off a tune or whatever like it's 85 90% of the sound just completely fixed you know everything's yeah. balanced out and everything like it doesn't it's not rocket. Like the days of like sitting in the studio for seven hours working on one song, I, <laughs> no freaking way. Like, does it yeah. sound good? Oh wait, that's another. That's another thing. That's another Kevinism. Um, good enough. <laughs> yeah. Right? Is it good enough? Is it does good it enough? do the work? Yeah. Right? Is it good enough to do the work that it's looking to do? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, don't overthink it. Like, ah, could the could the strings be a little louder in this section? Blah, blah, blah. Like I'll, I'll go back and listen to a tune from three years ago and rip it apart. And I'm like, no, it did the thing it was supposed to do back then. If I want to do more, I'll just write right. more. Mm-hmm. Whatever. And a lot of media is kind of throw away. You know, there's not a lot of uh, people replaying TikTok videos like Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, it's meant to do the thing. If it does the thing, the thing is done. Great. Yeah. We're out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's gone. And then make a new thing. Then you make a new thing. I would also probably advise people starting out to go for Logic instead of the other ones because it seems like Logic has so many like built-in quality of life features that I mm. don't it, have in case. Yeah, it's $200. It It has, like, you would have to spend $800 to get a reverb unit like they have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is just the best thing. Is the it's going to be different? You're going to. I mean, you can kind of tell. Kind of, you know, can you tell if something was done in Cubase versus Logic? There, eh, not really. Well, that very much depends on the composer, I guess. Right. I mean, you can do all the same things in Cubase. It just seems like Logic has yes. made them very much easier. Yeah. And yeah, they're, they're processing and they, they always update it. Yeah. They just came out with like another like 12 gigabytes of loops and samples. I'm like, okay, yeah. $200. Really? That's insane. Yeah. yeah. And you can use it on like, like I've, I have it on my laptop. I have it on, um, on this computer here. I've got an ice studio and it, it comes out of the box. Like Kevin was saying, there's so many effects that are already built into it plus there's like a dozen dozen and a half vsts you know software synths built in there one of them being alchemy which has like 1800 patches in it and then you can twist and turn those patches each patch has like 
eight different effects units that you could you could change the sound significantly with each one. You could automate that so it like passes through all that. And like I, there's just so much. There's so much potential. You could spend so hundreds do, of hours. We don't care about tech except for logic. You <laughs> should have that. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, if it's 200 bucks, it does make your life easier. Yeah. 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 And it, a quick balance of the song is a piece of cake. Like it's yeah. built in. There's a button right there. You're like, okay, boom. Yeah. Let's see what it sounds like in the car. Let's see what it sounds like on my phone with the with the buds. You know what I mean? All right. Well, that was a great episode, everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> about six minutes. Tight info. Uh, I'm going to have to disappoint you, but I think we have. Uh, no, nice. we're going to end it. We're going to end it, though. No. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I really want to go for some Korean right now. How long are we recording for? <laughs> I mean, um, I I don't know, but we were baking on about an hour, so okay, I think we're pretty much there, right? Good episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Agreed. All right, I will uh, stop the recording and I will say goodbye, everyone. So there you have it. Same, same, but different. Another podcast that shares the same ideals that I do, the Creative Commons space, us putting music out there between me, Kevin, and Alex. There's an overall catalog of music of almost 4,000 songs right now, and it's growing. Alex and I are feverishly building towards 1,000 each. As you know from my previous episode, I've broken the 500 barrier. Alex himself has broken 550, so... We're going to have kind of a race going on, which I think is great, but a race of good things, of good music for content creators out there like yourselves, and ultimately, we're just trying to get the things into the hands of the people that need them. So this will be making an appearance on the Tim Kulig Free Music Podcast periodically to supplement some of the content that I'm putting out there. So I hope you like it. Give me some feedback here as far as the interview and the discussions that we have. And I hope to see you next time on the Tim Kulig Free Music Podcast. 